Hey people, Frank's man here. Work continues on the Jeep motor, and uh, right now I'm ripping out the vacuum system. Gonna redo it, make it more simpler and uh, more reliable. I'm looking at this system, and this is pure 80s engineering at its worst. It's got uh, on and off valves and vacuum lines over vacuum lines just to keep things working. So I'm gonna delete all that and simplify it. Let me show you what I mean. <coughs> okay, I already started ripping stuff out. I got rid of the uh, fuel canister. That fuel canister, let me show you. I already got rid of this thing. See how many vacuum lines is on that? Jesus Christ. So this vacuum line went to the carburetor that controls when it comes on and off. And these two lines I cut off, go to the tank. They suck, I guess they suck the fumes out of the tank. And this is the vacuum line that operates it. So this vacuum line turns it on and off. But that one does the, the sucking, <laughs> I guess. And then uh, this went to the carburetor that sucked the fumes out of the bowl area. Had a little on and off valve on that. That was electrical. I just unplugged it. I'll leave the plug hanging on the motor. So that's out of there. Back to the motor. So the two lines I cut from the canister back here. These go to the gas tank, I know that for sure. And then uh, this is, that's the vacuum line that, that worked. The canister, the on and off vacuum signal. And then the main sucking is the port on the back. This goes to the PCV valve on the, on the intake. And it's also shared by the vacuum canister. The fumes get sucked into there and into the motor when it needed to. It's timed, so. So I'm, what I mean by all these on and off valves this is one, I don't know what the fuck that is. I guess that's a one-way check valve. Then you got another one down there. And you got one on the back radiator hose. I'm sorry, that's the heater hose. There's one on there. The one back there worked the valve controls for the air pump, which is the vacuum signal for that. That's getting pulled out of there and uh, an example of the system working for let's say this vacuum line it won't come on or turn off when the engine's cold which is the job of the little valve back there which is heat controlled through the antifreeze motor warms up it turns it on so you need the vacuum signal vacuum signal let's start from the carburetor is this part on a carburetor it goes back to the valve waits for it to turn on when it heats up and then it works it works the valving of the air pump so that's getting deleted you pull any vacuum lines off you got to plug it that way you don't have a vacuum leak, make the engine run wrong. So this port back here, this port right here are getting plugged. Never gonna reuse them. Okay, there's a... Uh, certain rules I follow when I redo the vacuum lines. There's major vacuum lines, which are 3 8 size. And then you got the minor vacuum lines, which are I think 3 16 in size and quarter inch in size 
Those two small ones, usually, if they come unplugged, the motor will keep running, compared to a major, a major vacuum line would be 3 8 If that gets disconnected or gets a slice in it, it will stall the motor. And there's uh, two things that run off the major vacuum lines, which is 3 8 and that's the power booster and the PCV valve. Those two. I don't know if I'll keep the the PCV valve, but I gotta hook up the power boost. You gotta have power brakes. Otherwise, it would be a bear to stop. So. so let's. There's one more vacuum line you gotta worry about, and that's for a part throttle vacuum. Part throttle would be uh, the vacuum line would be off right now and when you hit the throttle and you're cruising down the street that vacuum line gets energized that's important to know which port on the carburetor does that because that vacuum line runs the vacuum advance in your distributor this only works at part throttle it doesn't work at idle or wide open throttle at wide open throttle and idle this doesn't work so vacuum advance there is none only at part throttle so you got to find out which port that is and i believe that's this port coming out of the side of the carburetor right here so this one will you see it branches off and it was running the vacuum canister which is deleted so i'm just going to run a line from the carburetor down to the vacuum advance and that'll take care of where this goes to this thing to this to this and it goes to this and then to the carburetor that's all getting deleted and that'll clean up this area right here as for transmission there is no vacuum modulator on this transmission it's a, a 727 which only has a kick down and from the looks of it, I gotta climb under there because the fucker's frozen. So, no, oh, there's a fuel pump. I got the fuel pump on there in the last video, and I ran the lines. I used the original lines. I just did a little bending, and the fuel filter I got hung it right there. Bent the line a little bit to make it look all nice. Bent this up. And it goes into the carburetor. And I like this fuel filter because you get to see the contaminants that's floating around in the gas. And you can actually see the gas going through the system. If it's running out of gas, it'll, it won't be flowing. You'll be able to see it. So that's all squared away. All i got to do is run a line from here. I'm going to run it to a can first to start this motor to see how it runs. I also pulled the distributor off. Along with the wires, I know the fire order, I know where number one is, so you want to make sure you know that. I know the, I know how everything goes back together. There's a certain way you put it back together to do maintenance on there. So when you put the wires back in here, you know, this front cylinder, second, third, fourth, same on that side. So, and this one had a, a shredded wire on it, see? the only bad wire I found on her. I might just replace this wire or I might redo the whole set with uh, high performance wires using the same boots. I might shoot a video for that. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But that that needs fixed. Okay, distributor caps off looking at that somebody did tune up haha <laughs> so I don't have to spend money plugs look look pretty good too they're not all rusty well yeah they are probably from sitting but they probably haven't been used I'll pull one out and make sure but I'm not gonna change them looking at the distributor check the distributor you grab the part that's the shaft you don't want to pull that off 
you want to pull up on the shaft, see how much end play is on there, too much end play. And when you do the timing on there, the the light bounces all over the place. The line bounces on the scale. So this looks okay. And you want to make sure that the system advances and retards, resets by itself. Those are the weights underneath here. Make sure it's not froze up. You want to check the diaphragm in the vacuum advance. Uh, hook a line up to it. I just suck on it. Make sure you're not sucking air. Should be sealed. Make sure this moves when you suck on it. And uh, that's good. Okay. Just keep finding more and more stuff wrong. I gotta fix the kick down cable. Uh, it only goes part of throttle. Probably just le needs lube down there. Okay, as for the vacuum lines on the on the firewall, that's for heater. Uh, this works the is that cruise control heater vents is this one you could trace it and it goes into the firewall there and this is the main supply off the engine so follow that to the engine to the port make sure that vacuum line's good to make sure the heater vents work that's a actually just a, an, an empty ball if anybody's wondering it's a vacuum canister a small vacuum canister so it's basically a, a vacuum tank it's a tank an empty tank so is this thing looks like a bean can <laughs> it stores vacuum somewhere in the in the line it's probably a one-way check valve to keep it uh, charged up while it while the engine's off and then I'm assuming these lines here Work the four-wheel drive. I got to get into that because the four-wheel drive is locked. In the four-wheel drive, I got to dis disable it. Okay, I think that's it for now. So I'm going to keep working, keep plugging away. I'll update every now and then. Okay, let's talk about the 3 8 major vacuum lines. There's two systems that run off of that, which is the vacuum power booster and the PCV valve. Those two run off the 3 8 vacuum lines. And if they get disconnected, that's a, that's a major vacuum leak, which will stall the motor. Um, motor would probably start up and kind of run real crappy because this is about a quarter inch but if this whole vacuum line comes off of the carburetor like that yeah that's a major vacuum leak and it'll stall the motor probably shoot a fireball out of the carburetor too which is pretty cool but <laughs> dangerous so this one's getting plugged uh i might be keeping the pcv valve in the motor i don't know depending on how much smoke this thing blows um, plus how how good it runs with the system with the PCV valve usually if you leave it in there and you, I do what I do it, the motor would run lean I usually just plug it anyway because uh, PCV valve usually sucks all the air out of the engine block along with the fumes and if you have a hole which would be the oil cap here it would be a vacuum leak a major vacuum leak so motor will run crappy so i usually delete that and then uh power booster power booster runs and goes to one of the intake runners through a little little fitting so I'll be keeping that keeping it hooked up that way and there's a little one on there that runs all this mess too I don't, that's getting plugged 
And this, this crap's getting pulled out of there. Oh, my God. Okay, that's major vacuum lines. Okay, ignition wire inspection. I'm looking at these, and how you want to look at them is I'm just running my fingers down the whole length of the wire. Looking for anything rough sticking out or a bump. And uh, that would signify a cut or a slice. So, two down. Whoop. Check it out. That's a bad one. That probably goes all the way. Another slice right there. Another bad wire. So, I got two bad wires. It's just a dent. Dirt. <laughs> okay. That's a rub mark. Should be okay though. Okay. I got two bad wires. These two get replaced. Okay, here's a little tech tip. Uh, pulling apart this wire, and I'm trying to pull it off of the fitting on that control valve and it it it's froze up what you want to do is take a pair of pliers and just turn it you hear it pop now it's unstuck you pull it off Ta -da. that simple works for radiator hoses heater hoses Keeps you from uh, destroying the rubber and pulling the strings if it's a radiator hose. You don't pull the strings and tear them inside to where it makes the hose uh, swell up and explode. So, okay. Okay, I got the, the hose disconnected from wherever it went. I'm going to test the vacuum advance canister. You watch the arm this is the arm coming off of it i'm gonna suck on it yeah i gotta do nasty yeah okay suck on it it'll pull it back and i should be able to hold it and not feel any air circulating through it that's how you test it that simple it's sealed and it works up and froze up so <laughs> okay here's something you gotta see i pulled that big mess of, of vacuum lines out there's like one two three vac three vacuum ports that goes to the distributor that goes to the intake and that goes to the carburetor and that goes to the carburetor oh my god look at that crap it's a fucking spider that ran your distributor. What the fuck? Jeez. That's out of there. <laughs> okay, here's another conundrum. This thing has four vacuum lines hooked up to it. 
on one control valve. That was the control valve. In the back there, see the clean spots? That valve controlled the air pump control valve and it also controlled the EGR valve. Jeez. It's almost as bad as the one at the front. Look at that. Okay. Okay, I got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know, about 10 vacuum lines that I won't be using. 10 vacuum ports. I'm sorry. I have 10 vacuum ports I probably won't be using, and I'm just going to plug them. A certain way you want to plug them to. Uh, you could go to the parts store, buy the actual vacuum plugs. I'll probably just take a, a vacuum hose and stick a bolt in there and plug the hole. What you don't want to do is tie one or two other vacuum ports to each other by plugging them, which I mean by running a vacuum hose from here to here to take care of two vacuum lines with one hose. You don't want to do that. You want to plug each port individually, the ones you're not using. That way you're not messing with the, the vacuum signals for other ports that you will be using like uh, like this one I'll be using this one that one here that should be that is going to the distributor I don't want to connect these two to where it'll affect this one is what I'm saying so you want to plug each port individually Okay, this will be the last tidbit for for this video. Uh, put the new battery in there. I got strapped down. And, uh, of course, this originally took top post from the factory, but uh, the only battery I got is side post, so I got adapters to it. And adapters have negative, positive on there. But what people might not know is that they're actually two different sizes. The positive terminal is actually bigger than the negative. So when you put the, the clamps on there and you see that it has plenty of room when you're putting it on one of the posts, you might be putting it on wrong. So worth mentioning. Okay. Okay, I got the battery mounted. Let's see if the radio works. <laughs> Ooh, I got power. Brake lights on. That's probably not good. <laughs> Heater is off. Let's check everything first. Oh, wipers ain't working. Sprayer works. I don't want to touch the rear window. Rear defogger. Okay, let's turn on the radio. Hey, it works. Hey, Cleveland, this is Garth Brooks, and you're listening to 99.5 W. Oh, country. <laughs> oh, man, that's got to change. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay, let's try the wipers now. I had that, that freaking tube was jammed up on the wipers. Okay, successful test. Let's try to crank it over real quick. Ooh, okay, enough of that.
set these channels. Let's see. Okay. To set the channels, you just pull it all the way out and push it back in. Channel set. Uh -huh. Most important thing to remember. pull number one so definitely running rich closer look at the carburetor too the accelerator pump sticking so next step the carburetor's coming off and pulled apart okay okay here's a little overview on what i ripped off the motor that part that part and the charcoal canister. Yeah, that's full of charcoal, by the way. It'll absorb the gas fumes until it gets sucked into the motor when the engine's off and it's parked so you don't smell gas fumes while the car's sitting there. That's what the, the function is. A little overview of the motor now. You can see the actual engine block. <laughs> Yeah, looks like a motor now. <laughs> okay, if you like this thing, subscribe. Like it, hate it, leave a comment. Frank's the man. Bye.